All righty. Well, thank you everybody and welcome to Networks Live On Demand, a Blue Star Families webinar. I'm Liz Jones, the Blue Star Families Career Coordinator and your host for this evening. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the question and answer box or in the chat feature. If you're catching us live on Facebook, you can type your questions below and I'll be sure to get them to Eleanor and at the end of the, uh, her, um, I'm sorry, at the end of her slideshow, we'll be sure to answer them live. I'm actually so thrilled to have our guest with us tonight. This is her second time guesting on uh, Networks Live On Demand. She's a veteran, a military spouse, a mom, and a health coach. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to her. Thank you so much for being here, Eleanor. Thank you, Liz. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for showing up tonight to this webinar. Um, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes before I get started as people sort of trickle in and kind of get comfortable with the app and um, everything. I know this is a different platform, so sometimes it throws people off a little bit at the beginning, but um, I'm so grateful to be here tonight. Um, this is my second webinar. Uh, I did one um, at the end of the summer last year this summer, a few months ago, um, it was called Ditch the Diet. And we spent a lot of time figuring out um, how to, how to cl eat clean and um, cut the processed foods out of your diet so that you can um, learn to let your body take over. And um, so it was um, a very successful webinar. I think a lot of people um, enjoyed it. Um, I think last uh, we heard, uh, Liz said that there were over 1,500 views. So um, it was so exciting to um, have so many people hear the message. And um, I'm just very excited to be here, and hopefully this will this message that I'm bringing to you tonight will resonate with you as well. Um, so let's see. We've got five people watching. Hello, everybody. Um, if you want to just, um, I would love to hear where you guys are from. If you could just type in the chat box, um, shout out to your city or um, if you're on a military base or something like that. Um, I would just love to know where you guys are coming from so that um, I know where this message is being heard. And if you're catching it on the replay, um, oh, hi, uh, Melissa from Houston. And oh, oh, from New Zealand, California, Quantico. Oh, great, thank you so much um, for coming tonight. It's, it's great to have, um, have you here and I know you're eager to uh, listen to the message. So I'm going to um, split my screen so that you can see um, my presentation. And hopefully, let's see. Okay. Um, let's see, Liz, can you see my, my whole screen or just the PowerPoint? Um, I can see your whole screen. Okay, so let's, can we do that? There you go. Uh, okay, awesome, okay. So, um, all right, well, we're going to get started. It's um, a little bit past um, seven on Eastern Standard Time. My name is Eleanor Dooley, and I'm coming to you from Northern Virginia, just outside Washington, D.C., and I'm so grateful to be here and to be the health and wellness expert and ambassador for Blue Star Families, um, international and also here in D.C. So um, I'm so grateful that Liz asked me to uh, be here tonight. And um, I was able to put together this uh, webinar so that we can get a jump start on all of the anxiety around food and overeating that the holidays can sometimes bring out in us. So um, throughout the presentation, feel free to um, post a comment or a question. And um, if, I, if I can't see it on my screen, Liz will take care of it for me and let me know. There will be a question and answer at the end. So if there is something that you're dying to um, get some advice on or you need a little bit of uh, clarification on something I've said, feel free to um, ask me questions. I'm really open to making this interactive. So um, you can raise your hand or um, if you're just listening along with some headphones, um, that's fine as well. You can leave me a comment either on Facebook or um, here in the chat room. So um, I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited that you guys are here. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about 
healthy for the holidays. Um, I'm Eleanor Dooley. Um, like I said, um, Liz uh, gave me a, a wonderful introduction. Um, some of my certifications um, include um, certified holistic health coach. Um, I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York City. Um, so I got my certification also as a personal trainer and also as a nutrition and wellness consultant. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom of three, and um, I am a military veteran. I was in the Navy for six years as a surface warfare officer, and my husband and I just celebrated our 13th anniversary last month. So we've been married for 13 years, and we've been together going on about 17. So. Um, we've gone from Southern California to Central California to Newport, Rhode Island, overseas in Stuttgart, back to California, and now we're, uh, we're settled a little bit in Northern Virginia. My husband's now at the Pentagon, so um, we're really enjoying this tour, and I get to expand um, being a health coach through um, wonderful um, organizations like Blue Star Families. So. Um, so that's a little bit about my um, certifications, but um, I want to spend a few minutes talking about my story and what has brought me um, in front of you today. Um, so like I said, my name is Eleanor. Um, if you don't know me, um, uh, I'm happy to uh, introduce myself to you. Um, so I'm going to start with this photo of my husband and I. Um, so. Um, this is a photo um, that is very special to me because it has an importance. Um, I remember this moment that this photo was taken because it was the first time in my life that I ever felt truly happy and healthy and confident wearing a bikini. And, um, and I don't say that as a vanity thing. I say it as a measure of who the woman I became through um, Whole Foods Nutrition. Um, I had I had two kids at that time. Um, I had a wonderful marriage, and I was vacationing in paradise with my family. Um, I was so grateful for my life at that time. It was the winter of 2010, and I was just experiencing the magic of the island. My eyes were open. My heart was open. Um, I, we were enjoying amazing food and rest and relaxation um, with the people that I loved the most. I remember starting yoga classes and really focusing on my inner peace and um, the thing that comes along uh, with being aligned with who you are. Um, so that was a great moment for my life. Um, it really got my marriage back on track and my relationships with my kids. Um, but I do want to let you know that it hasn't always been that way. Um, Throughout my 20s, I never really gave much thought to eating healthy. Um, I never really um, paid much attention, and I never really needed to. I, I didn't have any health problems, and I really wasn't overweight. But um, when I became pregnant with my first son, I gained a lot of weight. I gained over 60 pounds, and this was after I had given birth. Um, so that's a picture of me and my husband after, um, you can see my, my son is a month, um, month old. You can't really see his face. You can see his little toes dangling there. Um, but the, I remember the pain that I felt, um, being that, being that person. And I'm not just talking about the weight. I'm talking about, um, the way that I felt about myself. Not only was I figuring out how to be a mom and all of the pressures that came with that, but I was really overwhelmed with just who I was. I, I had really low self-esteem. I was not very confident, and it led to um, a lot of anxiety. Um, I, I really wasn't interested in being healthy. I was more interested in being skinny and losing weight, and I really didn't know that there was a difference at the time. Um, I felt like I was feeding my feelings, um, and not my body. And that led to poor sleep, anxiety, uh, mood swings, weight gain. Um, and I just felt lost. Um, it wasn't until I met a health coach 
who really changed my life. She taught me not just about what food was healthy, because let's face it, we all really know what food is healthy, but she taught me why nutrition was important and the keystones to happiness. It leads to so much more than just being at a healthy weight. Um, I started taking steps to understanding my nutrition and figuring out what appropriate exercise and fitness meant to me. And um, then I enrolled in nutrition school. And when I figured it out for myself, I was so excited because I realized that I could share it with so many other people that could possibly be struggling in the situation that I was as well. So um, this is a picture of me and my two boys who made it to the top of the Chumash Trail in Southern California. If you've ever been out to Point Magoo, it's a really uh, beautiful hike. And um, it's pretty strenuous for those little guys, but they, they wanted to come along with me. And it, it just motivated me even more um, that I was being a healthy example for them. Um, this is a picture of my whole crew. Um, my little girl there, um, she's four years old now, and my wonderful supportive husband who, uh, without him and him believing in the dream that I had to be a health coach, I wouldn't be talking to you today. So I'm really grateful for um, just the the wonderful, happy, healthy life that we've been able to create together. And this last one is just, it's a great photo because um, there's days when my daughter does drag me through, even though I'm running, um, running to keep up, she's there um, pulling me along. So uh, this is just a little bit of insight into who I am and why I'm here talking to you today. Well, we're really here to talk about the holidays. So um, I borrowed this comic from uh, Randy Glasbergen, as you can see um, on the, the photo. Um, I feel like with the holidays coming up, there's um, so much going on and everybody kind of gets caught up in the season. And um, it was funny, I heard on the radio today, there was a commercial for um, stretchy Thanksgiving pants. Um, so rather than wear your normal clothes, um, it's sort of a joke and it's sort of an accepted behavior to just completely overeat on Thanksgiving. And um, so that's why I thought this was kind of funny. Uh, but to get really down to it, we're going to talk about what, um, what's going on. Um, as, so talking about the holidays, as a child, when the Christmas season would come around, I just remember feeling the magic of the holiday season. I remember um, the decorations and the house lights and um, the feeling of something extra special going on um, that was happening to everybody. People started getting these feelings of um, giving and um, love and um, just there's something special in the air. And that's what I think of when I think about Christmas and I think about the holidays. Um, so when did the holidays come all of, become all about food? Because I feel like that's such a dominating um, experience these days. So um, some of the things that are going on for you right now, whether you not notice it or not, is the sheer amount of food that is constantly available to us, in front of us, um, is, is massive. Um, the types of food tend to be very indulgent. They tend to be sweets or they tend to be um, things that you only get around the holiday season, bacon wrapped, anything. Um, treats, like sweet treats, tend to trigger cravings and overeating. And a lot of people are stressed during the holidays, um, friends and family, whether it's, um, it, it can be even good stress, but if you have family members visiting or you're visiting and you're out of your routine, um, that can cause undue stress on your body. Um, so uh, stress makes us crave sugar and um, that is what floods your body with cortisol. And cortisol is, um, what leads to sugar cravings because it throws your sugar, blood sugar out of whack. So it's really this cycle. And we all know that stress is going to happen 
to us. So there's no real way of eliminating stress. But what we can do is figure out ways to deal with stress. Okay, stress weakens your ability to make good decisions. Um, so um, another thing that happens during the holidays is feelings of scarcity. And I never really realized it until becoming a mom and watching my kids and how excited they get because it's Christmas. It means that um, there's going to be treats and there's going to be holidays and we're going to have two different Thanksgivings at two different people's houses. And um, that means we're going to get two kinds of pumpkin pie. And so it feels like since it's only happening right now that we need to take advantage of it. It makes you very impulsive. Um, if you know that this is the only time of year that um, your mother-in-law makes her special mashed potatoes that are saved for Thanksgiving, then you have a feeling that you need to eat them and you need to fill up on them. Um, makes you very vulnerable to temptation. Um, so um, just let me know if there's any questions throughout or if you're, you know, you're following along and something comes up for you. Um, I feel like the feelings of scarcity that are happening to us, uh, for example, um, Starbucks the, and the pumpkin spice lattes, um, when the commercial comes up on that first day of fall, I, I, that's all I can see all over Facebook. And people get very excited and that's amazing and that's awesome, but it doesn't mean that you need to go out and get an extra large every single day because they're not going to last. Um, marketing preys on people that um, panic when they think things are scarce. So don't fall into that trap. There are a few ways to overcome scarcity. Um, one of them is practicing gratitude and just being thankful for the opportunity to um, be with people and to experience the season. It doesn't have to necessarily be related to food or drinking. Um, you should never reward yourself with food. Um, I, I hear a lot of women that I'm currently supporting, um, they say things like, oh, I've been really good lately. And I say, well, what, what does that mean? What, what's good? And they say, well, I haven't been eating a lot and I've been eating salads. Well, not eating a lot is not good for your body. And eating salads is wonderful but you have to make sure that you get the necessary nutrients that you need so your body can perform all of the things that it needs to perform. Um, and once you eat well, it doesn't give you a license to eat poorly. So re by rewarding yourself with a hot fudge someday or going out um, for dessert or getting those donuts, you're not really rewarding your body. So that's something you just need to kind of keep in mind when um, a treat, an opportunity for a treat comes up. What is something else that's not food related that you can reward yourself with? Um, stop obsessing over food. It's just food. Um, it's just a holiday party. It's just a platter of cookies. Um, this isn't something that's life changing um, for you. So there's no reason to be in such a, um, a upspin about it. Um, this is one of my favorites to take preemptive measures. So if you know you're going out into a situation where you might be overindulging, um, just prepare. Know what you're going to um, take part in or know that there's going to be things that you are not going to have control of. What you do have control of is your choices. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, some preemptive measures you can take is if you know you're going to a holiday party, eat before you go. Eat something healthy and nutritious so that at the very least your body has those good nutrients and the ability to digest well and to get rid of some of the toxins that you might be introducing into your system later, like um, processed sugars or alcohols. Um, and if you go on a full stomach, you're not as likely to eat everything in sight. Uh, we've all been there where we show up to a holiday party on an empty stomach and we're ravenous. And it just seems like we cannot stop eating um, because we're eating not nutritious food 
And so your brain will not release the chemical that says that you are satisfied because you're really not satisfied. You're not getting the nutrition. So take preemptive measures before you go out. This will help you deal with those feelings of scarcity. Um, okay, so talking about getting healthy for the holidays or staying healthy. Um, the first thing I want you to do is feel it. So what does that mean? I want you to think for a moment about the feelings of um, what, what do the holidays feel like for you? What is that good, awesome feeling that you want? For me, when I think about the holidays, um, I think about sitting on my couch under a blanket with a cup of tea looking at my Christmas tree or looking at the decorations, um, driving through the neighborhood and seeing all of the Christmas lights, um, the willingness of people to get together during the holidays. Um, I don't know if it's an excuse people use, but people are much more willing to meet you because it's around Christmas, um, especially family members that might be out of town um, and you've come into town. People make special effort to be together. Um, also, the joy of giving is one of the feelings that I really cherish during Christmas. Seeing my children um, receive presents um, is is just a joy for me. Um, the joint happiness, the commonality of the season. Uh, you're much more likely to say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays to a complete stranger. And um, they're more likely to smile back at you. And just those feelings throughout the holidays really is what's so exciting to me. Uh, so if you notice of all of those feelings that I just described, None of them are about food. None of them have anything to do with food. So think about how you want to feel. So when it comes to the choice of food, you have something in front of you. Um, how do you want to feel after you've eaten it? I'm 100% sure that you don't want to feel um, stuffed. You don't want to feel um, in distress in your stomach. You don't want to feel bloated. You don't want to feel like you have to go to the bathroom or you need to unbutton your pants. Those are feelings that you want. You want to feel satisfied and happy and full of energy. Um, that's what you want to feel like. That's what everybody wants to feel like. So once you remove the emotional connection, that all of those feelings that I described have nothing to do with the food that you're eating. You can still experience the feelings of the warmth of togetherness and the happiness of the season without having food associated with it. So once you remove the emotional attachment and you focus on the feeling, um, that will open up this freedom for you. It is no longer about the choice of food. The choice is how do you want to feel. So the first step is to feel what you want to feel. The second is to choose. Choose your choice. Okay, so this kind of sounds a little bit interesting. I would say choose your choice, and I wrote it that way. Because if you make your choice based on experience, because you've done it before, and um, education and thoughtfulness, if you know you're not going to feel super great by having something that's indulgent, right? But if you choose it and that's your choice, then that's fine. You need to be prepared for what is coming next, okay? Um, don't deprive yourself of something that will bring you joy. If it brings you joy, enjoy it. But be prepared for the outcome. <clears throat> so choices that may bring you joy um, include the dilemma of, do I eat it because it's unhealthy and I want it, or do I not eat it? Okay. Um, so something that can maybe help you, a little tidbit, is um, foods that are high in fat um, feel very rewarding inside of your brain. 
because your brain releases dopamine. And um, it is a chemical that is a reward motivated. It, it, your brain releases it as a reward. Um, the thing about that is you can eat foods that are high in healthy fats and get the same results or healthy sugars. So, um, for example, if you're at a party, um, a holiday party, and you see um, all of these things in front of you, there always seems to be a vegetable tray in there. Somebody somewhere brought that vegetable tray. So you have a small plate of veggies, then you will fill up a little bit and still be able to have the goodies as well. But you will have some nutrition in your system and some nourishment going on for you. Some other things that, um, that can be eaten that are good healthy fats um, include peanut butter, um, guacamole, if you see that um, with, as a dip, um, berries or fruit. Um, I seem to see a lot of grapes on cheese trays, so that would be a great way to um, get a little bit of sweet um, to cut that sugar craving a little bit. Some protein sources I've seen out there, um, chicken bites, or um, sometimes you'll see chicken satay. So these are options that you can still enjoy at a party that aren't going to um, be, they're going to cut your cravings, but they're not necessarily going to derail your whole night. Um, so be prepared for the outcome of your choice. Now, um, a little bit of damage control. So let's say that you just went for it and um, it happens, it's not going to um, cause a huge change in, in your lifestyle. But um, some things that you can do for your body is definitely drink water because um, drinking water is going to flush your system, which is, which is what you need to do. Um, take some time a few hours after all of the indulgence and eat something clean and green to help move things along in your system and get those toxins out. And you have to allow your body time for rest and repair. Um, so if this means, um, if it's possible to sleep in or get to bed early, um, you need to allow your body time to recover. Um, so that's part of your choice. And the biggest takeaway from this step is to be intentional. Um, a huge meal, an overeating at one meal is not going to lead to weight gain. Um, the mindless snacking and the continual eating is what does. Because when you eat foods that are not high in nutritional content, you don't know when to stop because your brain does not release the chemical to say that you're satisfied. That's why you can eat a whole box of Oreo cookies and not be... Um, and, and keep eating them. And you can only eat maybe one banana. You wouldn't eat more than one banana. A banana is nutritionally dense, whereas the Oreos are not. Um, you become satisfied after you eat things that are nutritionally dense. So be intentional about the foods that you're eating. It, it will shift your mindset um, in a way that will allow you to make better choices in the future. Um, so Savor and appreciate the foods that you choose um, and supplement with nutritious foods. That's really going to help make a difference for you. Um, and the third step would be to thank it. Give thanks uh, for your choice. You've, cho you've chosen it. There's no going back. So be grateful. Um, if you chose something nutritious for your body, be so thankful that you made that choice to give your body fuel. And if you didn't, that's okay too. Just be grateful that you learned something from the experience. Either you're not going to do it um, again, or you're not going to do as much next time. Or whatever the lesson is you learned, you eat it in conjunction with something else and it, and it makes it um, a lot easier on your digestive system. Whatever it is, be grateful for that choice. Um, Embrace the feelings that are resulting from your choice, okay? Like I said, if you've chosen something healthy, 
wonderful. Be so grateful that you that your body is thriving and um, doing the things that it, it loves to do. Um, if you didn't do something as healthy that time, that's okay too, because you were prepared for the way that you are going to feel. And maybe next time you say, um, the next time I eat this, I'm really, I'm going to have half of the piece of cake instead of the full piece. Whatever decision you choose, you've learned something from it. So you should express gratitude that you're learning and you're getting better and you're getting healthier. The last one is just move on. You don't need to sit and dwell on what you did. Um, you've eaten it, you've, you've done, you're moving on. Um, decision over. So you are the one who controls the way that you feel. Trust yourself and allow yourself the freedom to choose um, and to make good and bad choices. But detaching the emotion from the outcome is going to prevent all of those negative feelings of being ashamed or being regretful or being full of um, anxiety about, oh, why did I do that? Oh, you know, beating yourself up about the, about the things that you did and the feelings that you have. You remove all of that negativity when you've expressed gratitude and you've decided to move on. Another day, another dawn. You can move on and get back to where you want to be. So just remember you are in control. Uh, just summing up, those three things that will have a huge impact on the way that you understand the attachment that you, the emotions that involved with the food that you choose. Feel it, choose it, and thank it. Um, I just want to reiterate that you need to enjoy yourself this holiday season. Um, you need to enjoy, savor the flavors of the season. You don't need to deprive yourself this year. You don't need to um, be on a diet, which I hate that word because um, it, it, it conjures up all of these negative um, attachment feelings that, um, you know, diet is a four-letter word. And, you know, all of these things, you just need to make healthier choices. That's, that's really what it is all about. And that's why I became a health coach, because sometimes those decisions aren't intuitive. They're not second nature. Because we were raised, um, you know, understanding different things about foods and um, different things about the way our bodies worked. Um, so just wrapping up, um, I, I do want to invite you, um, if you're watching on this um, webinar, I'm so grateful that you're here. Um, one of my gifts for this holiday season is to offer my time um, for you. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. So sorry. Where do we go? There we go. Offer my time um, to you as a gift. If you're interested in um, chatting with me, um, <clears throat> sorry, I just saw a question pop up. Um, if you're interested in chatting with me, um, I would love to figure out how I can um, help, um, help you understand the struggles and the cravings that you might be having and um, make a clear plan for the things that trigger you and maybe the not so healthy decisions. Um, oh geez, I think I messed up my, okay. So if you're interested, please let me know. Um, this is my email, fitduly at gmail.com. You can email me. Um, I, I obviously can't, don't have time for every single person. So if this, is, this message really resonated with you, please take the time to do this for yourself and to um, take that step, that leap into asking for support because that's what I'm here to do. That's why I became a health coach. Um, I do have a holiday giveaway. Um, I'm feeling festive. Um, so for all the participants here, I'm so grateful that you're here. Um, for one person that commented in the comment box, I'll be giving away my Eat Well and Thrive self-study program. Um, so I will uh, announce the winner and let you know. Um, and if you're interested in that as well, you can please contact me. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, so now we're going to move to the question and answer 
um, period. If anybody, um, if something's been lingering for you or if you have um, something that you'd like to share with the group, um, besides my mom who <laughs> wished me a happy 40th birthday, I am turning 40 tomorrow, um, which um, is wonderful and emotional and um, everything. Um, but I really do want to express my gratitude, not just for um, being here with you, but this place in my life couldn't have been possible without going through this health journey and understanding um, that I am an example to not only my children, but my loved ones, my friends, and reaching, on, reaching out beyond that. And just having you show up here um, for me and um, to better yourselves is really why I do this. So um, let's see, Liz, do we have any? We do, we do. Oh, we do, okay. Okay, I'll start off with the first one. It said, um, it says, how can I avoid the temptations at a holiday party where everyone is eating and drinking and I want to join in the fun? And we all feel that way. We all feel that way. Um, we absolutely do feel that way. So, um, so the question is, how, how do you handle yourself um, when all of this is in front of you and um, you want to have fun and you've been looking forward to this and you haven't seen these people in so long? And so the answer is to join in the fun and to, to have fun, but just make your choice. Um, be intentional about the foods that you choose. Um, if you're at a restaurant and you're ordering from a menu, you know, I always order a salad or I order something that is nutritionally dense and I eat it completely, and then I indulge in whatever else. Um, you know, if I am saving myself for a dessert, or, you know, my husband ordered the, the cheeseburger and french fries, then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have the salad, and then I can have some, because at least your body's getting that nutrition, you're getting full, full on that good nutrition, and then you can enjoy yourself. Um, so, I hope that kind of helps a little bit. Um, how do you avoid drinking? Um, I feel it's wasted calories. Okay, so this is what, and I struggled with this for many years too, because I do enjoy um, a glass of wine now and again. And um, I don't know if it's just around the holidays, but um, it seems like drinking is that, oh, you have to have a drink and you have to this. And um, there's kind of a social stigma. So you can still enjoy yourself with alcoholic beverages. Um, but remember, it's not a license to do whatever you want. Most alcoholic drinks are very sugar laden. Okay, whether it's a soda and an alcohol mixed together, an orange juice, um, a frozen drink. So choose things that don't have, that aren't heavily sugar, because most of them are processed juices and chemical sugars anyway. And that's what part of um, overindulging and drinking um, gives you the headache and the not so great feelings the next day because your body's trying to get all of that out. So I would drink a water before and after each alcoholic beverage. Um, not only does it keep you hydrated, but it keeps me kind of running around to the bathroom and to other places and it cuts down on me constantly sipping my drink or drinking it. Um, so that's a kind of a little tidbit. Um, I would cut the alcohol, maybe just have half a drink and then put it down, um, do something else, talk to somebody, go get some veggies or go get a snack um, and then come back to your drink um, and spread it out throughout the evening. So you know, kind of gauge your time. I was recently at a wedding, um, so I knew the night was gonna be about four hours. And so I made sure I wasn't at the bar every 15 minutes because I wanted to enjoy it. So I kind of went out and did and enjoyed the party and I wasn't keep refilling my drink all the time. I was just focused on having fun and not on the food and the beverage. And I think that really helped because by the end of the night, I, I realized, oh, I, I think I had one or two and I still enjoyed it, but it didn't go overboard. And, you know, they weren't picking me up off the floor. So, you know, that's a win too. <laughs> so, um, so do we have anything else here? We do. I really like this question. Um, I find it hard to resist the sweets. Is there any way I can still have my desserts and not regret it? 
that has me written all over it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. Um, I actually do do a talk. Um, hopefully, at my next webinar, um, I can talk on cutting the sugar cravings because it's such a big part of our lives. And um, I mean, even as a small child, you you know, you my, my kids are constantly asking, "What's for dessert?" or "Can we have some Halloween candy?" I'm like, "Oh my God, Halloween! I can't even right now." Um, so it's not just you know with kids; it's it's with all of us. And um, we have a chemical dependency on sugar. It's, it's in your brain, it's a chemical. So um, give yourself a little bit of a break as far as your willpower can only go so far because when, you're, when your brain craves it, um, th that's all you can do, that's all you can think about. It's not, um, you can't get it out of your head and that's with every single human. We just handle it differently um, when we know better and we do better. So. What you can do is satisfy that craving that your brain is asking. You want the sweets and you want it. You want that piece of pecan pie that your Aunt Mary makes at Thanksgiving and you want to have it. And you should have it. I would never tell you to deprive yourself of a choice. What I will tell you is um, by about bite two to three, the craving has been satisfied. Okay. But you're not just going to eat two or three bites of it you're going to eat a whole piece and then one another so how do you how do you handle that so what you can do is satisfy that craving that your brain's asking for with a healthy sugar now i'm not saying eat carrots instead of the pecan pie because that's that's ludicrous you know um i'm i'm a realist i'm a, a realistic person but you can have um something sweet like a sweet potatoes or um, carrots, or um, fruit, grapes, and strawberries. Um, have a small portion of that first, and then have your pie sitting there waiting for you. Because I guarantee you, once you've given yourself that nutritious sugars, you don't, you're not gonna, the craving is cut, you're not gonna want it so bad that you can't control yourself. You're still gonna eat it, you're still gonna enjoy it, but you're gonna be done when it's done. You're not gonna reach for that second or third piece because you've already staved off those uncontrollable cravings. So I hope that kind of helps and gives you a little bit of insight to what's going on in your brain. Yeah, no, that totally helps. Um, I have another question. How can I stay accountable to my goals when there's so much temptation? Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, being accountable, um, you know, you really have to be serious about your choices and, and where you want to be. And everything is a choice. Uh, like one of my slides was, you choose the choice. So it either supports your goals or it doesn't. You know, you're, if you're walking this kind of gray line where it, it, it's not supporting your goals and where you want to be. And that happens sometimes. I mean, um, you're not always going to be on the right perfect path to where you want to be. Sometimes you want to let loose and not worry about it. But the thing you need for accountability is somebody to hold you accountable. And the reason you need somebody else is because you, your brain and your mind has the power to talk you in and out of any decision at any time. And you can justify it with facts and figures and you can make a whole spreadsheet about why you should eat that piece of pumpkin pie whatever it is so when you have somebody that is trained on holding you accountable and not even being a drill instructor about it but just asking you the questions of is that something that supported your goals how did it make you feel is it something you want to do again these kinds of questions come up and you start getting those emotions out and onto the table. And that's when you start getting those aha moments of, no, you know what? That really tripped me up and I really need help getting back on track. And the good news is I am a health coach that is certified um, to help you be accountable. I have the experience and I have the education um, that can get you back on track. And it's not just as easy as handing somebody a few recipes and saying, good luck with your life. It's 
finding out what is a realistic path for you. And you are special. You are the only you, and you have the unique problems, issues, um, family, um, you know, all of these wonderful and not so wonderful things. It's all unique to you. You need a person that can figure that out with you. So um, that is how you stay accountable, not just through the holidays, but all throughout the year. All right. Um, I do have another question that kind of piggybacks off of the uh, alcohol question. Is it still possible to drink alcohol and live a healthy lifestyle? That's a really good question. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah. So I touched a little bit about that. Um, yeah, of course it's possible. Um, the thing is, how does it make you feel and why do you want to do it? Is it purely social? Is it because you enjoy it? Um, do you enjoy it to a point of not being in control of your decisions? Like it really boils down to what do you want it for? Um, and once you can start answering those questions like, well, I could probably get through the night just drinking one glass of wine and being the outcome at the end of the night will be the same, except I feel much better about myself <laughs> because I'm, I don't have a headache and I'm, you know, and I, and remember when you drink alcohol, your inhibitions are loosened. So you're far more likely to do unhealthy things like eat more food or have another drink, the more that you do it. And as long as you understand that that is happening and you are choosing that choice, then that's okay. That's fine. Like I said, you choose it, you own it, and you move on. But you are responsible for those decisions. You're the only one putting food in your mouth and putting drink in your body. So be prepared for what's coming next and learn from your decisions. Awesome. Well, I think that is all. I don't know if anyone have any other questions? I'm so glad you guys are here tonight. Um, I really appreciate the turnout. And for those of you who are watching it on the replay. Um, the gift extends to you as well. Um, please contact me. Oh, I had one more slide, but don't worry about it. It was my, um, my contact information. Actually, I'll leave you with that. Um, did you share my screen? Oh, there we go. Now I can't see you. Can you see that? No. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't know what's, there we go. Can you see that? There we go, yep. Okay. okay. So I'll just leave you with this, guys. Um, I do have a wonderful Facebook community that I hope, if you're not a part of, that I hope that you will join. Um, I have a community, Holistic Health from the Military Wife, um, and also Healthy Moms Love Wine, too. So uh, for those of you that were having the questions about alcohol and drinking for the holidays, please make sure you um, join the group because uh, we're a very interactive community. and um, you know, I'm there to support you with health information and um, lots of fun stuff too. Um, if you're interested in reading more about me, um, my website is right here, besimplehealthywell.com. Um, my biography can be um, found at, with the backslash in my name. So um, I hope to hear more from you very soon and um, I hope my message resonated with you. I hope you live a happy and healthy holiday season and um, I will be here after the holidays too. So um, if you need me then, I'm, I'm here for you. Well, thank you, Eleanor. That was awesome. I, I, was, I learned a ton. Um, since nobody else has any questions, um, we will call it a night. So thanks for attending and thank you. we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.